Okay, well, let's get started. Um, first of all, thank you very much to um, Anne and Ho for, from BioID for joining us today. Um, welcome, guys. Hello, nice to be here. And so, so today um, we wanted to show um, a, a quick demo of the work that we've done at Glue to integrate BioID into into the Glue platform. Um, it's a it's it's a fun demo. And then I'm going to hand it over to Anne, who's going to go a little bit deeper into how the technology works, and we'll take some questions at, at the end. And um, okay, so let's start. Maybe it's Maybe a picture is worth a thousand words, and maybe it's easier for me to actually show a quick demo of BioID and then sort of explain as we go. So I'm going to start sort of at the end with a demo. Um, at, at Glue, we have um, an application called Casa, and Casa is it's a web portal that lets you manage your two-factor credentials, and so we've configured. Um, Test our our test Casa server um, to use BioID authentication, um, and we configured it as a two-step authentication. So in step one, we use we use passwords. Um, so this is a really identifying who I am, and then in step two, we're going to use BioID. Now I've set I've set YubiKey uh, or or U FIDO authentication. I should say gener generically as my default authentication. So I'm going to cancel out of that because I want to log in using BioID. And now I can select a couple of different ways, but I'm going to show BioID. Um, first, I need to actually shut off my video because I can only use one video device at a time. So I'll use BioID. And now I have to sort of align myself. So this is using my webcam. Um, so I'm going to hit Start. And it, it's going to want me to move my head up and down because it's going to grab a couple of pictures. So there it goes. And that was it. Now it's verifying. And if it's verified correctly, it'll direct me to my application. Um, so, so this is the CASA application. And this allows me to manage my various credentials. Um, so for example, I have a couple of these FIDO devices registered. But we've also created a CASA plugin for BioID. So, um, so I could enroll. If, if I don't have a BioID um, template enrolled, um, then I could um, enroll, a, en enroll my um, facial recognition template here. Um, and I guess I could enroll again, um, which I'm not going to show because it's pretty much the same demo. It walks you through basically, like you know, moving your head up and down and and um, you know enrolling, I guess, enough information so you can be authenticated. Um, but um, yeah, what else can I say? So in, in Glue, in order to support a two-factor authentication technology, there's really two parts that we think about. The first part is writing what's called a Glue server uh, person authentication interception script. So this is the part that runs on the Glue server that actually validates this, the credentials. So in this case, to validate the credentials, we're displaying this, you know, special page that has some JavaScript in it that that gets the the pictures, and actually then takes a, that information and and sends it to the BioID SaaS service for verification. So, um, um, so so the interception script is actually really, you know, the part that that does the validation, let's say, or connects to the authentication service that does the validation. Um, and then the other piece of of two-factor authentication that we like to remind people about is the idea that um, you need some type of self-service portal that enables people to manage their um, their credentials. Because um, what we found at Glue is that there is no one authentication mechanism that's a panacea. So you know, there's no silver bullet for authentication. Sometimes, depending upon the device that you have in your hand or the application you're trying to get to, a certain type of authentication might be appropriate or convenient. And so, so sometimes the device and, and the context really drives the best authentication technology. So at Glue, we try and be neutral on 
authentication technologies, we really we're really delighted to see all of the the new services and technologies that are making authentication more secure, and we want to make our platform open for different auth um, authentication vendors to to build you know um, ways to use their technology in the Glue server. Um, and and Casa sort of you know if, if you if you could write an interception script um, and so Casa is sort of optional but the the fact having a self service way to enable users to manage these credentials makes it even more convenient because one of the sort of most um, challenging aspects of rolling out two factor authentication is how do you what happens when you lose your credential or or you need to, what's the equivalent of password reset in two-factor land? Now you can't lose your face, so I guess um, that's a good thing. Um, but um, um, you could maybe use your biometric cred credential to, um, to um, maybe replace a credential that you lost. So maybe you lost your FIDO key and you can use your biometric to log in and then um, remove the lost key and, and add a new one, so. Anyway, that that's a quick demo. Um, now you're probably wondering how how this all works and and um, how to um, live this detection and all that other stuff. And I'm not an expert on this, so I'm going to um, to stop presenting here and ask um, Anne to take over and, and give you guys some background. Anne. Yes, thank you very much. I will share my screen in a second. Okay, here it is. Can you see the full screen? Yes. Okay, great. So thank you, Mike, for the introduction and also for organizing this webinar. I think uh, it's very interesting how you implemented our biometric authentication. So I'm happy to be talking about server-side biometrics um, with anti-spoofing, and I will get into the different topics um, while I will hold my presentation. So for the beginning, I would like to introduce BioID. BioID is a German company which has been founded back in the year 1998. We are actually a spin-off of the Fraunhofer Research Institute IIS. So maybe you know the Fraunhofer Institute that's ha that has invented MP3. This is the one that we are a spin-off of. So uh, yeah, we've been on the market quite a while and we are proud of more than 20 years of experience in biometrics and also um, we are very proud that we can say that we have 100% proprietary software. We're building everything in-house. And while we're a, a pure tech company that uh, does research and development and for quite a while already. Um, I would also like to introduce you to um, Ho Cheng, our CEO who is with us today. He's also part of uh, the presenters. And so if you have a question later on, you can address it to, to him and we will all be happy to ask, answer the questions, of course. Um, Dr. Frischholz, who is also on the slide, is our CTO, and he has been with the company from the beginning, so since 1998 and even before in Fraunhofer. So he's been with us and is still part of the team, and so all the experience um, yeah, is um, summing up here. What we offer is a multimodal biometric authentication service. Um, it includes facial recognition and periocular recognition where I would like to stress periocular recognition because um, this is very relevant now due to COVID-19 and a lot of people wearing masks at the moment. So normal facial recognition doesn't work if you wear a medical mask, but the periocular trait, which uses the eye area only, can still recognize people. So that's um, probably pretty interesting nowadays. Of course, our liveness detection also is a very important part of our portfolio. Liveness detection is an anti-spoofing technology, and I will get into how it works um, later on and show a demo as well. Our photo verify service is an ID ownership verification. So that means our customers who build eKYC workflows, for instance, who want to do remote identity verification, they would be using our photo verify service. So this is just a quick introduction on BioID. Now I would like to start with the first topic, which is face recognition. So the question is, how does face recognition work? And for that, I would like to go back to the year 1895, where 
a French guy called Bertillon. He kind of started the idea of recognizing people from their facial traits, so from how their faces looked. Um, he invented a technique that was called Bertillonage, and um, his idea was to measure certain points in the face. So for example, the eye distance or the distance from the ear to the nose and kind of create values that are unique to, uh, to people in order to be able to identify them. Um, he was doing that with criminals. I think he was working at a police uh, station and so he had access to the criminals and could measure their faces. But soon after he um, proposed his idea, it was found out that those numbers that he calculated weren't really unique to the people. And so um, his technique was dropped, but now we still do face recognition. So how is it? How do we do it today? So uh, features actually are still the key. So like back with uh, um, Bertillon, the features are still the key for biometric authentication. Maybe you see those red points on the right. Um, those used to be the points where BioID calculates features um, in order to distinguish people, in order to be able to verify people. Um, now, we all know that artificial intelligence is a very important um, development that has come in in the last years. And uh, so I was thinking, um, you probably think that it works differently. Well, yes, it does, but still features are the key, but now we don't really know which features our DCNNs, our deep convolutional neural networks, use in order to distinguish these people. So we train our DCNNs in order uh, to have um, a recognition performance that is way better than what you could do with handcrafted features. But um, uh, yeah, the thing is that we don't really know the, the exact features anymore, but it, the AI um, technology outperforms humans as well as the handcrafted features. So we are very happy, of course. Um, this brings me to the next topic, which is um, server-side biometrics. So in order to explain server-side biometrics, I guess the easiest thing is to explain the opposite which is um, what happens on an Apple iPhone X. So on an uh, Apple iPhone X, they do facial recognition in order for logging in. And what they do is called um, match on device. So your biometrics are stored on the device. And if you want to log on, then your, uh, the comparison, for instance, also takes place directly on the iPhone. The drawback of this is that you are limited to this device and you will not be able to use your biometric template that is stored on the device from any other device. Or if you, for instance, lose your iPhone, you will not be able to recover your account. So Mike did um, mention the idea of account recovery with biometrics. And um, if you want to do that, you actually need to uh, use server-side biometrics. So coming to um, BioID's architecture, an important point is, of course, that we offer our biometrics as a server-side architecture, as I said, and we do that device independently. So all our technologies, all our APIs, um, they work device independently, meaning you can use any old webcam, old computer laptop, or a new whatever. You can use any device in order to um, uh, biometrically verify your identity. This is very important if it comes to um, bring your own device um, applications where you want to have an a biometric authentication application for end users, for instance, you never really know what, uh, what device they will be using. So your technology should be working on any device. So the nice thing um, about bio technology also is that it's sensor agnostic, meaning we can use any camera for our analysis not only for the facial recognition, but also for the liveness detection, which is a specialty of our company. So um, with any camera, independently from like special cameras like 3D cameras or infrared cameras, we can do our um, biometric, we, we can, um, we offer the biometric authentication service. Our technology is software-based, which, which already was in what I said before, and we offer it as software as a service 
the really nice thing about this approach is that um, the biometric industry has changed ex extremely in the last um, three, four years, I would say. And um, the performance has increased incredibly. So if you bought a facial recognition system a few years ago, that was not software as a service, but instead uh, like a, something you installed and used maybe even hardware dependent, if you bought that three years ago, then it would be completely outdated nowadays. So what we do is that we update our technology, our um, algorithms once in a while, if maybe once a month, for instance, and our customers don't even realize it because as I said, software as a service, um, it goes very, it goes seamlessly that our updates are, um, are in the systems and can be used by our customers. So um, the service side approach has various advantages. And um, if you actually try to provide an omni-channel identity, which is what um, BioID and Glue in collaboration can do, then you um, will want to go with the server side approach as well. An omni-channel identity um, is, needs to be platform independent. It needs to be software-based and sensor independent. And the nice thing is that if you want to do account recovery, like Mike already said, then um, this is a very good approach. If you can um, yeah, access your biometric identity from any channel that you might need or your employees or customers might want to um, access it from. Of course, if it comes to an omni-channel identity, there are some concerns because um, having um, your biometrics stored in a server, server architecture, um, server infrastructure, for instance, like a cloud service, um, then there are some concerns if it comes to the access. You really want to be sure that no one can access your biometric data except yourself, of course. So biometric fraud needs to be prevented. And biometric fraud can be, happen, for instance, through silicon masks that are maybe even individualized and look like you, of course, through photos, through videos. So there are different types of uh, biometric threat, uh, fraud attempts that need to be prevented. Um, that's the reason why BioID has been working on something called liveness detection. And liveness detection, or the official term is presentation attack detection, um, is a way to prevent imposters from accessing biometric data. So um, I think before just going on talking, I would like to show a demo to you because that's probably the best way to uh, get into the topic. So what you see here is that our algorithm detects this as a fake. Um, I was doing this demo a few months ago with a standard webcam. And as you can see, it actually was a fake. Uh, I am now detected as a real person with the green frame. And I'm now trying uh, to fake the system with a photo and bending it and trying to make it move like maybe a human would move, but it is always detected as a fake. And of course, as I said, videos and displays are also a big threat. So I will be trying to get into the system with a moving video of myself. So you can see it looks like me, it moves like me, but of course the human eye knows it's a fake, but our algorithm also needs to know that. So I think this uh, short demo shows quite nicely the different type of types of attacks that we need to prevent from gaining access. And um, well, maybe you will have the, the question in mind is this all AI? Because I was speaking about artificial intelligence before, um, I was saying that performance has increased a lot since AI has come in. And now the question of course is, um, do you simply train a system with a few fakes and a few live people and then it knows the difference? And of course the question is no, that's why I was asking it this way. Uh, the answer is no. Um, it's experience and expertise in AI. So what I mean with experience is that BioID has actually started its research on liveness detection quite a while ago. Our first patent was issued in 2004 on the challenge response technology. And um, we added the 3D structure analysis in 2010. 
this is actually a really important um, software software part that we still use, um, and it's distinguishing 2D fakes from from live people. So the important thing here is with normal standard cameras that capture 2D images, we are able to analyze those for a 3D structure, for a 3D geometry. And so we can decide if it was a real um, head that we were seeing a 3D uh, structure, um, or if it was um, maybe a photo or something like a 2D, 2D structure. And we can do that with standard cameras and don't need a special camera like a 3D camera or an infrared. Of course, this was not enough as well. Um, texture analysis was added in 2015. This was when videos, displays, and so on were becoming a big threat um, in unsupervised authentication situations. So we needed to add something in order to catch those fraud attempts. And in 2017, we actually fused all of this with artificial intelligence. And since then, of course, we, were, we are uh, constantly working on the algorithm. And we are very proud to be um, one of the few companies in the world who are leading the industry in this liveness detection, especially the center independent liveness detection. I will get into applications now, maybe only shortly, but I think um, with what I've been describing, you probably have some ideas as well. So you can also um, ask some questions in the end, as I said. Um, account recovery has come up a few times already because it's probably a very, um, a very good use case because it's an unsolved issue for many companies. So in situations where you need a password reset, especially now in the COVID uh, pandemic where people are um, working in home office, so working remotely and they are maybe forgetting their passwords, it is kind of a weak link because you need to be sure that your employee is the one asking for a new password, but the IT administration cost is immense if you want to do face-to-face -face, um, authentication. So the need um, for our customer, a German telco company, was a password reset for their employees and customers that was automated, omni-channel, and with high assurance. So this combination, um, of course, is tricky. And their idea was to use our biometric verification with liveness detection so that the employees and customers can use their face in order to um, verify their identities and then gain access to their accounts. And so the account recovery problem was uh, solved for this company because biometric account recovery, of course, undoubtedly binds the person to the digital identity, which is what is needed in this case. Other authentication applications are um, login and consent, um, for instance. So if you want to log into your bank account, if you want to give consent to a transaction, if it comes to banking, um, that's also a good um, application for our technologies. And if it comes to work at home authentication, also COVID um, has leveraged, uh, we are, um, has elevated this um, use case because work at home uh, has become a standard and people need to be sure that they are, um, that, they are, that their employees are the ones who are really working, who are having access to the customer data, for instance. So uh, work at home authentication is also a very important use case um, and growing intensely right now. I already mentioned periocular recognition and the healthcare industry has always been an interesting sector. But now, um, as masks are becoming more of a standard as well, um, there are a lot of authentication applications that require recognition, even wearing masks. So um, for instance, check-in kiosks in hospitals um, can be equipped with this technology in, and um, would not recommend, uh, request people to take off their masks in hospitals, which is, of course, not desired. And so uh, access control wearing masks is also uh, possible with our technologies. I think what you see from this slide is that there's a lot of different ways you can use biometrics. And the nice thing about the Glue implementation is that it um, opens up this biometric authentication for a broad uh, user group. So um, I would actually like to thank Mike for organizing this webinar and also for the collaboration, because I think uh, 
it's a very, very good thing. And I would also be happy to connect. So if someone um, has questions that they don't want to ask right now, or if you have uh, ideas, please feel free to connect on LinkedIn and also write me an email if you're interested. And maybe someone wants to ask a question right now. So I would like to thank you for your attention for the moment. Um, you know, maybe um, Via was going to um, um, start. Uh, so if you have a question, um, we have a question um, um, box or, or icon that you can hit um, and enter your question online. Um, somebody already asked one question, um, which I'll pose, uh, Anne, because I think this always comes up when you're talking about server-side biometrics. There's always the risk of a privacy um, a breach because you can change your password, but you can't change your face. Mm -hmm. So server-side biometrics are maybe more sensitive because because um, um, a breach of your biometric um, template um, could really um, could be bad. Mm -hmm. So what does what does um, BioID do to um, I guess protect or hash the templates? Mm -hmm. um, so to protect from a, if a breach does happen. Yeah. So the thing is that a template is a, a numerical representation of the face. So it's, it can't be retransformed into a face or something. And the nice thing about uh, face recognition is that there is no standards for templates. That means even if a template gets stolen, although it can't be extra, uh, it's extracted from our service, but even if it gets stolen, it can't be used anywhere else. So a BioID face template can't be used in a different facial recognition software, for instance. And you can always re-enroll, meaning you delete your current template and you re-enroll and have an, a new fresh template, of course. But I think the important thing is that uh, it's only a numerical representation that cannot be used outside of the BioID web service. Okay. Um, Via, did you want to take over with the questions? Yeah, I was just uh, I was just reading um, the second question, which is in regards to this um, this topic. Uh, and basically, um, how does the how does this um, the storing on the server, uh, the GDPR uh, and the data rules? How mm -hmm. how does that work in accordance and compliance? Yeah, I think it relates to my last answer. Um, so we only store what we really need um, for the biometric authentication. So for instance, if you only use lightness detection, we don't need to store anything. We only analyze the images that are coming in. We would give back the answer. Um, for, for instance, yes, this was live or no, this was fake. And then we delete the images right away. So we are working in a like data minimal way. We only store what we really need. And then for enrollment and verification, of course, we need to store um, the biometric template, but it is the only thing that we need to store. Um, if it comes to the, the verification process. So as I said, it's only a numerical representation of the face and we only store the biometrics and no other personal data. So we make sure that there are no names or email addresses associated so that we, as the service provider, we don't know who we authenticate. We only know this was the same person as the one that is enrolled for like, uh, a biometric identifier. It's just a, a random number that we use to connect, um, but we as the service provider don't know whom we authenticate. Thank you, thank you. And um, also, are there any other questions, perhaps technical, um, uh, that the technical side, how the script works with the glue server? Um, I'll, I'll wait a few minutes before we conclude the, the Q&A. Um, I had another question. I always like to throw questions at the, that haven't been discussed ahead of time. So sorry about this, Anne. But can BioID be used for identification, not just authentication? I'm thinking no, but I, I was curious. In other words, oh, yeah. can I maybe not have to put in my username and just use <laughs> BioID the whole way? Yes, we actually have an API for identification as well. So uh, it's not a one-to-one -one matching then, it's a one-to-end matching. So you have a database and you can have your customer, for example, uh, identify and then all the images in, or all, all the templates in your database are compared to the incoming um, image. And then we would uh, give out a certain score. And so 
identification is definitely possible as well. Um, I'll, I'll ask another question. Um, you know, biometric, biometrics always come with various um, um, sort of calibrations for how many false negatives, how many false positives. Is that type of information on your website or how, do, how, do, how can you dig deeper to find out like just how yeah. accurate is BioID? Well, I actually would recommend any company who's interested in biometrics to do their testing themselves because uh, to be honest, uh, those numbers always depend on the data set you use to calculate it. So of course I could tell you we have a 99.999 accuracy or whatever. So I could tell you almost any number, but the thing is that you will want to use your own data in order to see how accurate it is. So we have a lot of customers who have their own data sets for testing or just for testing the liveness detection. They really try to uh, fake the systems and they are course, then always very happy if it doesn't work. Um, so if they are not successful with the spoofing. So that's what I would say here. Of course, I could give out some numbers um, in, uh, in private emails. But um, yeah, testing yourself probably is the best idea. Oh, so I'll handle this, uh, this question. So what um, question is, is it possible to use BioID as the only authentication factor or just as the second factor with glue? That's actually getting at my question about identification. If you're going to use BioID as a one-step authentication, you would have to use it for identification, right? And then, and then um, I guess you would you would say the identification, the authentication would be the same. So I think it's possible. It really depends, I guess, on your tolerance for risk, right? And you. That makes yeah, sense. May I add something? Um, sure. So for instance, uh, the BioID Playground, which is our sandbox for testing, um, you can log in there just typing in your user username and then using your face for authentication. So you could use, you could do the same and then it's a one-to-end matching because you only need the username to connect it to the biometric template and then you can use the face for authentication. So it doesn't have to be identified as soon as you don't use, uh, use username password uh, at the beginning. I hope that sure. was clear. Maybe Ho, you want to add something? Yes, uh, just one uh, very important point here. It's uh, we're talking about user authentication. So the user wants to be very dead that he claim who he is. So, uh, you will not use the uh, one-to-many ident uh, identification in this case. Identification one-to-many is typically used for account recovery, as you already said earlier. That uh, I I lost everything. What do I you know? I prove I'm I'm Ho Chang. Then what do you do? So you you still need to go through the database and making sure that this is the person in the database who claims to be Ho Chang at the score that is acceptable to to the service. Okay, so. Identification is not used for to logging as a single factor in this case because you still need to present yourself who you, who whom do you want to be to be verified as okay so it's it's pretty much one to one uh, user authentication. Yes, yeah, excellent point. And I always got this confused when I first got started in the industry. I, I would conflate identification and authentication. So one way that you could implement this in Glue is what we call an identifier first authentication flow. And Google does this quite effectively where they ask you for your username and they don't even ask you for your password or anything. They just say, what's your username? And then after you enter your username, then they enter you for, they ask, they prompt you for your password or your other credential. So I think that's what Ho and Anne are suggesting might be a flow where you, you identify yourself with your username and then we use the, you authenticate with, with, your, with your image. Did I get that right, Ho? Yes, I think uh, there's also what they call context awareness uh, uh, factors that they can uh, take into account. For example, you know, where, where you're logging from and if you have the device and somehow they can uh, figure out if this is the device owned by you, even though it's a brand new, uh, it's, it's a, a, a reset. Uh, so there are ways that you can use a contact awareness uh, factors to determine uh, to support your one-to-many identification. But again, uh, it, it's not uh, uh, meant to be uh, uh, for verification or, or authentication in this case. Right, right. Yeah. Just one point also, uh, when Uncle Trin was talking about uh, 
uh, when someone was asking about this uh, uh, GDPR thing, uh, by the uh, as a biometric service provider, we are in terms of GDPR a data processor. So there's a controller, which means is the uh, the application server it could be a glue server or could be your Active Directory's uh, the domain server, for example. Those are the one who knows. Uh, uh, who knows uh, who the user is, okay? We don't know at our end. We only have anonymous uh, ID uh, so that we can tell you whether or not this is the same person. Well, we have no way to tell whether or not this is Ho Chang or any personally identified information at our end. We have no such things. So in terms of GDPR, we are a pure data processor. Okay, yeah, that's a good clarification. Um... So, um, um, B, I'll, I'll take over for a second on the questions. Um, so we have, I guess, a couple of questions about um, is, is BioID centralized or decentralized or can it be deployed on-premise versus a SaaS? Um, maybe mm -hmm. you could address that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we are generally, our model is a SaaS, a SaaS model. So our, um, we, have a, we offer server-side biometrics, as I said, and normally as software as a service. But we have some customers like uh, banks, for instance, who are not allowed to use a software as a service. And so there is a chance, um, there is the, we can <laughs> um, offer it on-premise as well, but it's not our standard. But of course, um, as I said, some regula regulations require on-premise installations at our customers' um, premises. Um, there, there's a question about NIST certification. Okay. Could you, what is the question? I, it just says, what about NIST certification? And I, I'm not okay. sure what certification they refer, um, they're referring to either, but I thought I'd just pose it. Um, yeah, well, probably uh, the question is uh, for, uh, either for the NIST face recognition vendor test or the IBETA certification. So I guess a clarification would be good in order to answer it. So maybe um, the person wants to write me an email and I can clarify because it's quite a big topic. The whole evaluation and certification uh, industry is huge and there's a lot of ways uh, to do it. And so I can give you, a, <laughs> I could have a yep, talk yeah. only on this topic for maybe half an hour. So maybe you want to come <laughs> uh, and, and ask the question privately. Right. Uh, how were you going to say something? Yes, yeah, so if uh, we uh, the uh, the we would we have the ISO standard certification. If this is what uh, this person was asking for, uh, the ISO there is a ISO standard three thousand o seven one for liver detection. Okay, if this is something uh, he was talking about, yes, uh, we will have this uh, this uh, this ISO standard certification. Okay, well, we're a little over on time. And um, so I want to thank um, Anne and, and Ho for joining today. Um, I find this topic really fascinating. I could probably go on for another hour, um, but um, we want to respect everyone's time. So thank you guys for joining and, and collaborating and supporting us uh, doing this integration. And, um, and I'm, I'm also happy to answer questions if people want to send me a message on LinkedIn or tweet at us. Um, that's fine too. So thanks, guys. And thanks everyone for joining today. Thank you for organizing the webinar. And thank you, thank you, so thank you all for your attention. Thank you thank for you. everyone for joining. And just uh, to let you know, there will be a follow-up email with the recording of the webinar and resources to, um, with links to contacts as well. Awesome. Okay. Good. Thanks everyone. Stay safe. Thank you everyone. Okay. Keep